ghosts appear in many forms. We can see them. What was that? We can hear them. I am not afraid. And sometimes we can even feel them. We've gone around the globe in search of the most terrifying spirits and supernatural beings who continue to live on long after their deaths. On world's scariest hauntings, anything can happen. Because you never know who's watching when the lights go out. What the hell was that? In this episode, nestled deep in the Essex countryside, is one of the UK government's best kept secrets. It's just a wooden building which looks very, very small, but as soon as you get past those doors, it is miles of underground tunnels and secret passageways. A subterranean relic of the Cold War, the vast secret nuclear bunker at Kelverdon Hatch comes alive with the energy of the dead. Kelvin Bunker is, in my opinion, one of the world's most scariest places. It's teeming with different energies, everything from shadow people to full-bodied apparitions. Buried 125 feet below the ground, only the brave managed to spend a night here. It's a really creepy place, and it feels like you've been watched all the time, like you're not alone. That chair's moving. <gasps> that chair's moving. Oh, my God. Kevin. In the small village of Kelverdon Hatch in Essex, a quaint, unassuming cabin sits in the woods. But this is not an idyllic British cottage. Deep below the foundations lies one of the UK's best-kept secrets. For 40 years, Kelverdon Hatch was the location for the British government's secret nuclear bunker. With the threat of Cold War hanging over the country, there was a real worry that the USSR would launch a missile at any moment aimed straight at the UK. Decommissioned by the Ministry of Defence in 1992, Kelverdon Hatch is now teeming with paranormal energy. The haunted bunker is owned and operated by Mike Parrish, who has opened it up to the public as a tourist attraction. Well, obviously, we've got a bunker in the middle of Essex because it's the London bunker. It was where some of central government would have come had there been an atomic war. It was built here because this is the furthest south that the Ice Age came. And so whereas the rest of the land around here is London clay, we've actually got free draining soil. And so it happened to be nice free draining soil on a hill far enough away from London to be safe. Originally built as an RAF defence base in 1952, as the Cold War heated up throughout the 60s, 70s and 80s, it became the unofficial safe house for the British government. It took them a mere seven months to build it from uh, start to finish, which was quite remarkable. It would take you that long now to get planning permission. But uh, obviously there was a bit of a panic going on. When you first come across the bunker, it presents itself like a small bungalow in a, in a, in a wooded area. Um, but going inside, you soon find that there's a 100-yard tunnel leading you deeper and deeper into the hillside behind. The bunker underneath itself is actually 125 feet below the ground. It was built to hold 600 people, but by the mid-80s, they'd whittled that down to 450. The bunker remains frozen in time, still poised and ready to rescue officials and members of the public in its various rooms, including a dormitory and a sick bay. There were so many different rooms in the nuclear bunker. All these rooms house different operational departments. There's also a, a BBC radio room that would be used in the event of a war to broadcast live from that particular location. 
once you're actually on the inside of Kelvedon Hatch, it's it's just a rabbit warren of tunnels. Um, it is a huge place and it's very easy for somebody to get lost on the inside of there, but the location is amazing for a paranormal investigation. The bunker has fascinated paranormal experts for years, with reports of it being home to a whole host of spirits. One of the explanations as to why the bunker might be haunted is that a uh, burial ground was disturbed when they constructed it. And it's a very common sort of cultural trope that if anybody's body is, is not correctly buried or has been disturbed after it was buried, then it leads to a discomfort in later life. They unearthed human remains. I would say that that is probably why they're experiencing the paranormal activity that they are. When you disrupt a grave site, ancient or not, it's gonna riff the spirits that you're unearthing, and especially how you're dealing with their remains, which they weren't dealt with in a respectful manner. So I'm assuming spirit wouldn't be very happy with them. Kelvin and Hatch also has reports of various other entities and demonic spirits that manifest themselves here due to the fact that people have conjured these spirits and have done Ouija boards and seances over many, many years. I picked upon a number of people. There is a female there. Um, she likes to sing and she likes to make herself known. And there's quite a lot of floral perfume as well that, that follows this lady about. I've never myself experienced it. No ghost has looked me in the eye. So, no, I haven't seen them. But lots of people who've come down here are quite genuine when they say they have seen something. And it's not for me to dispute that. It's just that I'm not on the same wavelength, obviously, or not prepared to admit them into my mind, but uh, others perhaps are. Ghost hunter who has spent more time at Kelverdon Hatch than most is Mickey Gokul. He stumbled upon the paranormal secrets of the Cold War relic completely by accident. The secret nuclear bunker here at Kelverdon Hatch for us was a training ground, a place where we would take our paranormal investigators to get used to an environment, get used to the dark, no ambient sounds from outside. It meant that none of the equipment would be interfered with. For example, the um, what they call the ghost box. Uh, it uses radio frequencies, so we wouldn't experience the external radio frequencies, we would just experience whatever's happening inside. So for us, it's a training ground, but it proved to be more than that. I've been here three times with uh, paranormal teams. On every single occasion, we've had some kind of activity. Along with many of his own first-hand experiences, Mickey has heard all of the rumours, myths and legends that swirl around the bunker. We hear so many stories, but certainly there's been reports of a lady that's been present as well. The rumours are that the lady was disturbed when this building was being constructed. Apparently the burial ground which was in the area at the time, was disturbed and she says to haunt and sometimes terrorise people that are here. The restless spirit has been seen on many occasions by tourists and ghost hunters alike. One of the ghosts that people have reported seeing at Kelton Hatch is known as the tall old lady who presents as very elderly looking, but also freakishly tall. There have been reports by eyewitnesses of her moving around in the shadows of the former nuclear bunker. I would have to say that she's there either trying to seek justice for herself or just make her presence known. Once you unearth human remains and if you don't lay them properly to rest and have respect, because things do happen, some graves are unmarked, so on and so forth. Spirit is affected by that. Just because you can't see things doesn't mean that they're not affected. The unsettled woman is just one of a number of terrifying ghosts that keep many people away, but also send many people flocking 
to mysterious Kelverton Hatch. In the village of Kelverdon Hatch in Essex, a clandestine bunker is hidden below the ground. The unused atomic fallout shelter now plays host to a bevy of spirits. But you'd never know it by looking at the unassuming entrance. It's just a wooden building which looks very, very small, but as soon as you get past those doors, it is miles of underground tunnels and secret passageways. You will get lost inside there. The entrance tunnel that leads down to the main bunker is haunted by one of the most often seen ghosts of Kelverdon. There have been reports by many visitors to Kelvin and Bunker of seeing a woman in full military uniform, often as real as you and I. This female officer has also allegedly been telling people to get out, and she speaks to these people as clearly as, as we are now. Many people who visit Kelverdon don't even get as far as the bunker, chased away by this fearsome woman. Keen ghost hunter Sadie Forth has first-hand experience of this. We started off the night's investigation down here in the tunnel, and we walked up to the bottom of the tunnel behind me. It was me and my two lady friends, and we were the only people here in the bunker all night long. I got out my night vision camera to start filming to see if anything was here, and it looked like there was a figure at the other end of the tunnel. There. Can you see that? Tall and dark. Yeah. With a face. Yeah. A dark silhouette, a shadow type figure, which was quite frightening to look at. And I zoomed in on the camera to see if it was still there, and it was. I'm not picking anything up on camera. I don't think I am anyway. And it was just really quite frightening, actually, to think that there was something watching us from the other end of the tunnel. We were here on our own. So the sighting of the military woman is quite interesting in a sort of hauntological sense, which is this idea that there are futures that have been lost to us where things took a different path. The idea that maybe in another parallel universe, a Cold War did fully break out or there was a nuclear war and perhaps this woman exists in a different sort of space almost. As Sadie and her friends ventured on through the tunnel, their night took another terrifying twist. As we were sort of halfway through the tunnel, sort of near to this end, a lady's voice came through really scarily and told us to get out. But it wasn't a nice get out, it was a really frightening get out, which really terrified the living daylights out of all three of us to the point where we did want to get out, but we were scared to get out because the only way out was past the voice that we'd heard come from this end of the tunnel. So we needed to find out where the voice had come from. What's quite interesting about the reports of the military woman is that she talks directly to the, the people that have seen her, which would suggest that if she were dead, she doesn't know that she is, or that she's in fact alive, but existing in a different sort of time and space to us, so she is very much not a ghost in the sense that she is the apparition of a dead person, but is a fully autonomous person in her own place. It really set the tone for the rest of the night that we were here and completely frightened us. But as we were going back, it's like we were peeking around the walls to see if there was something there, because we, we were really terrified, but, but there's no explanation for it. We did eventually come back down to work out where this voice had come from, or what it could be, a possible explanation for it. And the only explanation I could come up with was that it come from this tunnel speaker. It was like it was something here, not wanting us here. I don't think it was a warning because it would have been more friendly. I think it was quite menacing. Deep down inside the vast nuclear bunker at Kelverdon Hatch, 
you'll find some of the most unnerving spirits. So one of the types of apparition that have been reported at Kelton Hatch are shadow people, which are frequently occurring dark shadowy shapes that are seen at the periphery of people's vision. Seeing shadow figures at Kelvin Hatch is probably the most common phenomenon reported there. And I think the reason for that is because this place is so very dark and it's underground, and the fact that it might well have been built on a burial site gives rise to the many different spirit forms that may well dwell still at this property. Some say they're time travelers, some say they're evil spirits. I've come into contact with shadow figures that haven't scared me. I believe it's very much when you're investigating or you're in a haunted space, you use your body as a tool. So it's how the shadow person makes you feel. Obviously you're gonna be unnerved because there's a shadow figure standing in front of you. And your initial thing is it's black, it's dark, it's gonna be scary. Ghost hunters come from all around the world to hunt down the ominous shadow people. Paranormal investigator Alan Robson recalls his first visit to the bunker. We walked through the door and the first thing I felt when I come down here, you weren't allowed to come in here. And it was that eeriness which you get, which you think someone's watching you and saying, look, you're not allowed in here, get out. When we started walking around here, it just got more weird feeling. It felt like you're being watched and no one wants you in here. It's private, you're not supposed to know about this place. Alan and his fellow paranormal team members focused their search for the shadow people on the communications room. Well, in this room, we um, came in far end down there. So we decided to set a couple of cameras up down there. We put some detector lights on these tables here. When we were down there with the uh, cameras doing a bit of an investigation, we had these lights go off on these tables here. And we got to this spot it was like we had all, all of us got a tingly feeling. So often when people report seeing shadow people, the sightings come with a sense of malignancy. So there's, a, there's a, a feeling that these entities or whatever they are, are out to cause harm. They feel dizzy, they get headaches, they feel tingly. I would say that that's caused from the energy that they're experiencing from being around certain spirits. In this instance, because remains were unearthed, I would say that these spirits aren't happy. I'd say that they're not at rest, and that's why you're getting shadow people. Both scared and excited, Alan and his team lay in wait. All the lights were off, and we waited for anything to happen out here. We started getting noises, things moving out here, which is, um, needed to be really quiet for this to happen. We couldn't come out of that room because we knew it would stop. And that's when we could see the shadow passing, past the windows in that room. And this happened about three or four times. We know no one was in this room. We were all in that room together. So whatever the person was that was walking around here, it wasn't alive. Paranormal expert Becca has experienced it too. I've seen shadow pass through solid, like I didn't see face. It looked like a mask to me. Like, you know those old like Chinese masks where it's just like the face for the whole, and I, it was soft, I knew it was a woman. Like full on wispy apparition. For somebody who's never experienced something and actually sees a shadow person or sees a full manifestation of a person, that would be quite scary, but sometimes when you see a manifestation, it's only for a split second, and then when you look back, there's nobody there. I think that's what scares people even more. Intrigued to see whether the cameras had picked up any of the shadowy figures, Alan and his team pressed play. When we went back on the footage of the camera that was set out here, we had the dark shadow walk past that camera twice, which to me looks like a woman. Military, I don't know, but definitely a woman. Looks like she's got her hair tied up or hat, and it looks like she's carrying something. And she's going from this end, where we felt it cold, to the other side of this room, and then disappearing about there. Twice this happened. So this must have been the, the, 
the figure we were seeing, or the shadow, was casting the shadow over on that room, which done it twice, but we see it more times than this, but the camera caught it twice. The video footage clearly shows a shadow moving past in one of the rooms of the Kelvin and Bunker. And it is quite possible that this is a shadow figure and one of the many spirits that have been reportedly haunting this location. I would definitely say that it is very possible that it was spirit trying to communicate. Again, uh, investigators say, you know, show me that you're here, make your presence known. That doesn't always mean that spirit's gonna do that right in front of you. They may go to the next room, there's a camera, and walk by it or not even think of it. That's just how they manifested themselves. So I definitely, I definitely think that's spirit. Many experts who have ventured deep down into the bunker at Kelvedon Hatch have seen the shadowy spirits. One of my colleagues actually saw what he believes to be a shadow figure himself. It was lurking around just next door to the BBC broadcast room. And as it moved between the rooms, he saw a physical figure. He saw something that had an outline that was darker than the dark of the room itself. Because it's absolutely pitch black inside Kelvedon, nine times out of 10, a spirit would be black and they usually would find that they walk past a laser grid or they'll walk past a piece of light and they'll pick something up that way. Alan will never forget his encounter with the dark side of Kelvedon Hatch. This figure, you can see it's actually, it, it, it's a person. It's not just a, a shadow, you know, it's got depth to it. In, in, in it's kind of, it's not walking, it's kind of hovering along. It's just not normal, the way it looks. If it was a shadow, it'd be all bendy, all over the walls and everything. And from that to start, from this area where you get the tingling, that makes sense, doesn't it? That's why I believe this is actual shadow figure, as they call it. And they're not very easy to catch. But that night, we caught one, yeah. The terrifying shadow figures at Kelverdon darken its endless corridors. Not all spirits can be seen, though. Some make contact in other ways. Stop the device, Charles. Oh, my God. In the woods on the outskirts of a small village in Essex lies a secret nuclear bunker, an unused Cold War base concealed from the British public for 40 years. Kelverdon Hatch is hidden 125 feet below ground. From the front and the outside, it looks like a cottage, but actually, in the depths of this building are caverns of rooms and spiralling staircases that move throughout the vicinity. The seemingly endless corridors below are now home to numerous paranormal beings, one of which is known to defy physics. On my first visit to the bunker, uh, we were very dubious about poltergeist activity. But on the second visit, we witnessed one of the dummies that are on the, the bunk beds. We witnessed one of those actually coming off and we were unable to account for it. So yeah, I would... I would say there is some poltergeist activity here. The word poltergeist is the German word for noisy ghost or noisy spirit. There are various different theories on poltergeist. Poltergeists are said to be active, intelligent and generally mischievous spirit forms. They are able to throw objects, move objects, interact with the living and will cause mayhem and distress anywhere that they're found. People who claim to have been haunted by poltergeists have reported being hit or uh, scratched or have had things thrown at them. And some reports of poltergeists have been particularly dramatic. You know, they'll have beds or cabinets, quite heavy objects thrown about the house. Some poltergeists can even make a physical connection from the spiritual to the real world. I've known people who are hardened sceptics, have their own personal experiences of being touched, and I've also had people who are very, very open, who've experienced absolutely nothing. So it depends whether that spirit kind of takes a liking to you or, or not. I've had somebody follow me around a place and touch my leg and give me kisses, and that's quite unnerving when you actually have that, because it's kind of a little bit strange. 
I would say it would be energy from spirit. I'd say it'd be a spirit that's able to harness or manifest a lot of energy to be able to move things or touch you. Like I said, that takes a lot of energy. A low level spirit isn't gonna come up to you and you wouldn't feel their poke or that they're even near you. High energy, you're gonna feel that dizziness, you're gonna feel that tingly, they're gonna affect you physically. The poltergeist activity at Kelverden Hatch is believed to be down to one man in particular. So there is a story about the construction of the bunker which involves one of the, the workers. Apparently he'd been laying concrete at one of the lower floors. And so it was pumped into the walls. And it was a day and night job so that they didn't get a, a day break in the concrete that would then make it uh, weak. Rumour has it that one morning they turned up and the foreman was missing and his gloves were on the side of the uh, wall where the pump was pumping the cement in and he was never seen again. His hat was seen floating on top of the cement in the morning and his spirit is said to haunt Kelverden Hatch to this day. The assumption being that he might be responsible for the poltergeist activity. One paranormal team who investigated Kelverden captured some of the amazing poltergeist activity on camera. The video footage shows a team of investigators calling out, asking the spirits to show themselves or to move an object. And as you pans around, you slightly see this chair moving very, very suddenly. Oh, that chair's moving. <gasps> that chair's moving. That chair is moving. Oh, moving. oh my God. Kevin. Thank you to the spirit that is moving the chair for us. You're doing really well. It's quite possible that a spirit was in there trying to intelligently communicate with the team. And by moving that chair, it was definitely getting their attention. Spirit communicates in many different ways. Unless you're using a ghost box or um, doing an EVP session, you're not going to be able to hear them. So you're going to say, move something, show me that you're here. And I believe that spirit chose to move the chair. Say, hey, I'm over here. <laughs> The moving chair at Kelverden is strong evidence of spirit interaction, but experts remain torn on how to define poltergeist activity. There are sort of two main ideas about what a poltergeist is, and one being that uh, it's a spirit, a malicious spirit, that has, for one reason or other, attached itself onto one person, or can often be linked to a specific place. So, for example, a family might move into a home and they find that they are being haunted by a poltergeist because the spirit of the previous owner still considers that place to belong to them. Another idea put forward as to what a poltergeist might be was devised in the mid-19th century, which was that it could be psychokinetic energy that has been projected from an individual. Be it spiritual or psychokinetic energy, also known as telekinesis, the footage is still thrilling for any paranormal enthusiast. That chair's moving. That chair's moving. Oh, my God. It's very much exciting, because usually you ask spirit, you know, show me that you're here, let me know that you're here, whether it's a knock, whether it's, a, you know, moving this. And they don't command. Like, you can't command spirit to do what you want. They're not, you know, a parlor trick. So when they do it, it's scary, and then you get the surge of adrenaline through your body, like, oh my god, I just witnessed something supernatural. One of the most active areas at Kelverden Hatch is the radio room. Mickey Gokul has been investigating the nuclear bunker for five years and experienced one of his most unexplainable happenings here. Well, this is the communications room here at the secret nuclear bunker. My team arrived into this room and we felt a presence. We felt as if there was energy here that we couldn't explain. Specifically, when we got to this point here, this was the point that changed a lot of things for a lot of people. This is the point where we established a communication with a spirit called Charles. It was quite remarkable because using a simple EMF device, which was handheld, and a lady that we'd never met before sat in a chair right here. And she was surrounded by my team holding night vision equipment, recording equipment, 
and EMF equipment. Charles, is that you, sir? Can you make that bleep once for yes, please? Thank you. An EMF device, also known as a K2 meter, is one of the most commonly used tools by any ghost hunter. They were using a K2 meter, which measures the electromagnetic force field or frequency around you. And spirits are able to use that and manipulate it to give you answers. Are you going to show yourself to me? Indicate by bleeping this device. Thank you very much. Two for yes, one for no. Um, and the spirit was communicating with him. The EMF, or electromagnetic field responses, were quite unbelievable. Would you mind lighting the device if you were happy with the present that you received from Her Majesty the Queen? Thank you very much. I use this filing cabinet as an experiment, an experiment to see whether this spirit could actually hear what we were doing, could hear sounds. I tapped three times, and there was a response on the EMF meter. I tapped three times, and very quickly followed by two. And again, there was an immediate response. That's when I knew it could hear us. I'm going to knock. I want you to replicate the knock on there. There was the delay in your knock as well. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Three. Oh, yeah. And this is where I felt the most energy. I felt, standing in this spot here, there was an energy, but I couldn't tell what type of energy it was. I didn't know if it was a male or female, but then it dawned on me we were making contact with someone or something using the EMF device. So I asked the question, are you here? And the EMF device started bleeping. Is this where you are? I asked, would you make the EMF device bleep faster? And it did. Bearing in mind the EMF device was 20 feet away, it was bleeping faster and faster and faster until I said stop, and it stopped on demand. Stop the device, Charles. Oh, my God. I knew that this was the spot where Charles was. I would say it's a mischievous spirit. How you are in life is very well how you are in death, and you know, you might have a spirit that just likes to be a trickster, or is reacting to the things that are being asked by the paranormal team. Are you here? Show me you're here. Like I said, they just don't do things on command. If your name is Charles, please activate this device and make it go. Just come closer to me, sir. Is your name Charles? Thank you very much. By speaking to Charles through the EMF device, Mickey was able to find out much more about this enigmatic spirit. I could feel him. I couldn't see him, but I knew he was here. And through a series of questions, using the EMF device, we were able to ascertain that he worked here, that he wasn't an ancient spirit. He passed away at the age of 50 in 1992 or thereabouts. He also refused to give me his full name, but preferred me referring to him as Charles. This has really changed it for me. This location, this spot, and the spot we were just in with the chair has changed my life. The one reason why I believe communicating with spirit is important is to hear their story. As an investigator, and I'm sure as why you do what you do documenting haunted locations is to get down to the bottom of the story. Why is this haunted? Why are we here? Why are these spirits here? That's very important, and you can only do that so much without communication with spirit. And there are so many more stories waiting to be heard, 125 feet under the ground at Kelverdon Hatch. Kelverdon Hatch in Essex is the home of an underground nuclear control base kept secret from the British public for 40 years. Soldiers who served down here during the Cold War would rarely see the light of day. 
how long they could stay down here is sort of open to dispute in a way, but it was nominally three months. It was as long as their food lasted them. If it had just been a small amount of radiation, the territorial army who were surrounding the outside to keep the public out would have been sent off to get us more food. In those days, of course, the government had food stocks, so they would have brought them in from the food stock. So it was as long as our food and water lasted us. And we've obviously got water buried underground, we have our own sewage systems, and we're self-contained and I'll say nominally for three months. But it seems as though some of the people down here have stayed a lot longer. Some have even made contact with paranormal investigators by way of a spirit box. A spirit box uses radio frequency in order to generate spirit voices. So a spirit box will scan every single radio frequency in quick succession in order to produce what's called static and white noise. And spirits use this to come through as a spirit voice. You can hear anything on a spirit box. It could be somebody's name. It could be um, how they passed away. It could be certain numbers of, of squadrons. It can be absolutely anything that they obviously want to communicate with you. Usual things that we've heard previously is people's names and intelligent answers if we've held up a torch or anything like that and we've asked the question, can you tell us what we've got in our hands or anything like that, but usually you will find anything that comes through on a spirit box is usually intelligent, so they will answer questions for you. Ghost hunter Sadie Forth stayed overnight in Kelverdon with two of her fellow paranormal enthusiasts. Towards the end of their fright-filled visit, the team picked up the voice of a supernatural being when using their spirit box. It wasn't anything explicable in our world. It was something just random. It wasn't a recorded voice that was projected to come out at a certain time. It just was there and then as though it was telling us to get out. It basically terrified the living daylights out of us all. It was me and my two lady friends who came here and we were here all alone all night and it was really quite frightening. <laughs> It's quite common for anyone to be scared during an investigation. I personally do feel fear in some of the places that I visit, but often you have to put that aside and carry on with the job at hand. It's very normal for investigators to feel fear during a paranormal investigation, and on several occasions I have had such a sense of fear and foreboding that I've had to leave the property. Although some spirits can show themselves as full manifestations, or famously at Kelverdon Hatch as shadow people, others only seem to be able to present as disembodied voices. There's a lot of different theories on <laughs> where their spirit can go. I just believe it's a different dimension. I believe they're able to just be at peace and be over on the other side and not be so physically attached to this plane. That's where I believe they go. I'm, I'm sure they can come back and forth, they can touch here, because that's where we get good spirits, your family, your friends, the people that come, you know, and watch over you. But they're not stuck here. Sadie has returned to Kelverdon since her night of frights, but still feels uncomfortable in the 125-foot-deep bunker. It's a really creepy place, and it feels like you've been watched all the time, like you're not alone. Some experts believe that the ghosts who haunt Kelverdon Hatch may not even be from our own space and time. It's interesting to think that there have been reports of sightings, ghost sightings at Kelvin Hatch, um, considering that no one's actually lived and died in the building. But there's something incredibly powerful about the space because the idea of a nuclear war for all of us is sort of one of the most terrifying concepts and the way that the bunker is put together and how it still exists today, it's very easy to sense that something had taken place and that, you know, it had been in operation and perhaps that 
in another time and place, a nuclear war did occur. And so when you go into the bunker to see it laid out the way that it is, it almost feels like there's an alternative future somewhere where this place had actually been in, in operation. In a sense, when you're in the bunker, you can intuit the lives of the people that in another world might have lived down there. This is one of the reasons that paranormal teams still flock to Kelverden Hatch, all trying to capture something remarkable in a place where they once weren't welcome. Well, obviously not when the government had it, um, because people hadn't been down here then, they weren't indeed allowed in here to investigate it. But since we've been open to the public, so they have uh, come down, paranormal groups, and most of them find evidence of paranormal activity of some measure, be it orbs or be it mediums getting hold of people or occasionally the odd photograph. During two nights of filming in the bunker, our crew experienced some strange anomalies. Whilst filming, the lights would mysteriously turn themselves on. And the overnight trap cam was triggered in the pitch black when the nuclear facility was completely empty. People have claimed to have captured orbs in photographs. Perhaps they've gone to investigate an area that's got a reputation for being haunted, and when they receive the photographs back, they find these bright, small spheres in the back of the photograph. There are many different theories about spirit orbs. Orbs are generally the first manifestations of a spirit entity, normally usually energy or balls of energy with their own kind of signature. The spirit learns how to manifest in many different ways. There's not one specific way I've seen spirit manifest. So whether it's a little energy ball, whether it's a wispy figure in front of you, whether it's a shadow person, there could be many different reasons. The secret nuclear bunker at Kelverden Hatch may have been decommissioned in the early 90s, but it certainly seems that some of its residents are still at home, deep within the subterranean network. Kelvin Hatch is one of the more interesting haunted locations in the United Kingdom, since it has never officially been lived in. It sort of retains a very unique atmosphere, unlike many other locations. Kelvin Hatch has got activity there, and I would say that there is presences of numerous people there. I also think that there's a significance between the residual haunting and also the intelligent haunting. Anyone brave enough to explore down here had better come prepared for a fright. Kelvin and Bunker is, in my opinion, one of the world's most scariest places. It's teeming with different energies, everything from shadow people to full-bodied apparitions and possibly demonic entities. I would say it rates quite highly because there was only the three of us here. So there was no contamination from any other sources here. It is definitely one of the creepiest places I've been to. I have been to lots of other creepy places, but I would say this rate's quite high on the scale of paranormal activity.